Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this second session of UNCTAD ITC webinar series on trade and biodiversity, titled Sustainable Guidelines for Biodiversity Value Chains, especially dedicated to Latin American and Caribbean companies. This is Ivana Fabierna speaking to you, Program Officer at UNCTAD. It is a great pleasure uh, to be with all of you here today. In this event, we have participants jointly, joining mainly from Latin America and the Caribbean. Buenos dias a todos, bienvenidos. But also from Europe, Asia, Africa, and North America. So thank you all very much for joining us in this session. On behalf of the ITC and the UNCTAD teams, we sincerely hope that this webinar we have organized will be of great interest and utility to you. If we can go to the next slide, please. During this webinar, we encourage the audience to please use the chat to send us any questions, queries, or comments you may have. We'll be monitoring the questions and the speakers will answer them after each presentation or uh, at the final Q&A se section. Uh, this webinar is accepting questions in English, Spanish, Portuguese, and French. So please feel free to use uh, the language you are most comfortable with. Also kindly include your full name, your Zoom username. So it is easier for us to identify who you are. To do that, you need to click on your names under the participants list and then click uh, on the option rename. Also, all presentations and background material will be available in the webinar website after this session. Also note that this webinar is being recorded for internal use. It will be available on YouTube afterwards. We invite you to follow us on social media. You can see now in the screen the Twitter accounts of the organizers and speakers of today's event. And also for those who didn't do it, um, please uh, reply on the chat to the two questions, three questions we have posted while we wait for all the rest of participants to join us. We can go to the next slide. This uh, session is the second of our webinar series on trade and biodiversity organized by the Trade Sustainable Development uh, of the International Trade Center and the Biotrade Initiative of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, under the framework of the Global Biotrade Program, linking trade, biodiversity, and sustainable development. This is a program financed by the Swiss State Secretariat of Economic Affairs, SECO. And we would like to take this opportunity to thank SECO for their continued support to BioTrade through this program. The purpose of this webinar series is to emphasize the positive role of trade in conserving and sustainably use biodiversity, helping to halt its loss, making trade sustainable by implementing legal traceable commercial exchange of goods and services, which generates in turn social, economic, and environmental benefits such as livelihoods, jobs, and habitat conservation, contributes to the sustainable development goals and biodiversity objectives. This session aims to promote the shift to sustainable trade in different sectors and explain why biodiversity and trade can both be beneficial to each other. This webinar, Two Sustainable Guidance for Biodiversity-Based Value Chains, is specially oriented to companies based in Latin America and the Caribbean, in particular, small and medium-sized enterprises and producers working in biodiversity-based value chains and implementing sustainable practices. If we go to the next slide, you can um, see on the screen the agenda of today it includes presentations by experts from UNCTAD, from Peru, and ITC. The first presentation will illustrate Guidance for Sustainable Sourcing and Production of Biodiversity-Based Value Chains by my colleague Lorena Jaramillo from UNCTAD. So I am pleased to make way for this first presentation by Lorena. Lorena is an Economic Affairs Officer at UNCTAD 
And since, two, since 2001, she has been working in biotrade internationally with UNCTAD and also in her native country, Ecuador. She is currently responsible for the UNCTAD Biotrade Initiative, which is being implemented in more than 65 countries. Additionally, Lorena has worked in the development and implementation of sustainable development projects in Asia, Africa, and Latin America in relation to biodiversity, sustainable trade, business development, among others. During her career of more than 20 years, Lorena has written several publications related to sustainable development, uh, sustainable trade, biodiversity, uh, reconstruction and peace, among others. And she's an economist specialized in sustainable development uh, from the Pontificial Catholic University of Ecuador and has an MBA from the University of Geneva, Switzerland. Yeah, Lorena, please, the floor is yours. Hello, uh, hello, can you hear me? I'm having some difficulty, I cannot see the meeting. We can hear you very well. Um, can you see me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very well. Well, okay, um, let me see if I'm able, I, I cannot see the screen, I don't know why. Something happened, sorry. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I'll just try to do this virtually. So thank you, Ivana. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this second webinar, Focus on Latin America. I am Lorena Jaramillo, as Ivana mentioned, and my presentation will focus on the sustainable, on the guidelines for the sustainable use, uh, sustainable sourcing and production of biodiversity-based value chains. Next slide, please. So my presentation is divided in three parts. Uh, the main focus of my intervention will be on the second and the third part, which is the sustainable sourcing and production, and I'll give you also some examples. Next slide, please. So let me start with some definition so that we are all on the same line. So the first one being what is biodiversity? Well, it's everything that it's alive, from the plants, animal, even human beings, like, and microorganisms and ecosystems. Also, biodiversity-based products uh, are the products that are uh, developed using this biodiversity, as well as the services that are derived from it. For example, like nature-based tourism or bird watching. The third definition is uh, it relates to the sustainable use of biodiversity. And this is an important concept for biotrade because it means that the use of the components of biodiversity, meaning the species, the ecosystems, and the genetic diversity is done in a way and a rate that it will not lead to its long-term decline. Another important definition relates to value chain, which is um, means um, consider the relationship established between actors involved directly and indirectly in a productive activity with the aim of adding value in each stage. And next slide, please. So in this slide, you will see um, there is a, a simplified value chain where you have, a, which involves the different alliances between the producers, the processors, distributors, and consumers. And you have uh, indirect actors uh, that are supporting institution and create uh, an enabling policy environment like governments, business support organizations and academia. This next animation, um, this is a simplified version and you can see how uh, normally the information, the benefits and the value added tends to be concentrated at the end of the value chain while uh, and the initial stages of the value chain, you see there is the knowledge and environmental responsibility. Next animation, please. And um, what we really aim to achieve is to have um, a more inclusive and participatory 
approach where, for example, that all actors are involved in the planning and in the decision making processes, where all the information, the cost, the benefit and the environment responsibility are shared throughout the, all the value chain actors, as, as well as the value added. Next slide, please. Um, so why is biodiversity important? Um, as we are, uh, as we did biodiversity and by, <laughs> with biodiversity based value chains, I also wanted to share with you further information on biodiversity and where do we stand. We have seen in the news articles and messages regarding the environmental crisis that have increased even more in recent years, and a lot of examples of, of how biodiversity is being lost. For example, last year, uh, the IBES, uh, which is International Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, their global assessment estimated that 1 million plants and animal species are facing extinction and biodiversity loss is projected to accelerate throughout 2050. We also see the recent study of WWF that it estimated that an average of 68% decline in animal population sizes tracked in the last 46 years. Um, also, not so encouraging <laughs> uh, news were the results of the Global Biodiversity Outlook number five that shows the state of nature. And it tells us that we're not tracked to live in harmony with nature as within the current biodiversity roadmap which is the strategic plan for biodiversity 2011 and 2020, none of the 20 biodiversity targets are fully met. And why is this important? Because if the world population is expected to reach almost 10 billion people in 2050, it means that we will need the equivalent of three planets to provide the natural resources needed to sustain the current lifestyle. Next animation, please. So this loss is also affect people and businesses. Why? Because biodiversity is the foundation of livelihoods. Over 4.3 billion people depend on natural resources. There was an estimate by the Development Bank of Latin America, CAF, that said that 75% of households in Latin America depend on biodiversity to meet their basic needs. Uh, also, if we see how important biodiversity is for food security, where 75% of the crops depend on animal pollution. But biodiversity not only gives us this uh, essential input to our livelihood, it's also important because of it, uh, its value for cultural, spiritual, and religious reasons. Um, also, biodiversity provides inputs and services to enable by businesses to operate, where it's estimated that around 50% of the global GDP depends on nature. The most dependent industries, for example, agriculture, food and beverage. The loss of biodiversity is also affecting, um, is also being seen as a risk um, by CEOs, where the World, uh, the World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report of 2020 estimated the loss of biodiversity as one of the top five risks perceived by CEOs over the next decade. And we are living it now even more. The current events such as the outbreak of COVID pandemic remind us more than ever how interconnected is human health with the health of our planet. Next animation, please. There are also shifts in consumer concerns and demands, government policies and business practices. For example, regarding access and benefit sharing and the entry into force of the Nagoya protocol, as well as with COVID outbreak and the importance of food safety boosting immunity and overall health for consumers, governments, and companies. We have seen, for example, increased demand for products associated with health, food, or immune systems such as vitamins or supplements, or, or even hand sanitizers where demand doubled or even tripled, but we also see that other sectors are struggling as well. Uh, we have also seen in the news <laughs> how government plans our also recovery plans are also fostering green and sustainable initiatives, um, such as the EU, EU Next Generation Recovery Plan, that will also support business initiatives, business green businesses. Sorry, green initiatives. We have seen now how environmental concerns and the importance of sustainability are shifting consumer choices, 
even during the pandemic. There was this IBM uh, Institute for Business study of over around 19,000 consumers in 28 countries. And the findings were very interesting because this study was done in June this year. And it stated that nearly six in 10 consumers are willing to change their shopping habits to reduce their environmental impact. And over uh, seven out of 10 consumers consider sustainability very important and are willing to pay a premium for brands that support sustainable practices. The estimated average of the premium price is supposed to be 35%. And we have also seen initiatives or programs mobilizing and engaging various actors such as BioTrade or the Convention on Biological Diversity's Global Partnership for Business and Biodiversity. And also newer initiatives that were launched last year, such as the Business for a Coalition that mobilized around 600 companies with a revenue of 4 trillion US dollars, also financed for biodiversity, which includes financial institutions um, amounting around 3 trillion in assets, 3 trillion euros in assets. And then um, the recent pledge on at the end of September, the pledge, uh, the leaders pledge for nature that represent political leaders in 28 countries from all the regions and Europe. And they all call for action to reverse nature loss and also commit to bring positive contributions to biodiversity. Next slide, please. So now I will be focusing on the, on the presentation, which is the second um, point in my presentation on sustainable sourcing and production and examples. Uh, next slide, please. So let me tell you about who we are. I am. I work for the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development. Um, we are the agency responsible for trade and development issues within the United Nations. And we're dedicated to promoting the development-friendly integration of developing countries into the world economy. Uh, we were born in 1964 and we have 195 member states. Mm, as a way to respond to the Agenda 21, uh, in 1996, so imagine how over two decades ago, UNTAS launched the BioTrade Initiative, and which aims to promote trade and investment in biodiversity-based products and services to further sustainable development in line with the objectives of the Convention on Biological Diversity, which is sustainable use, no conservation, sustainable use, and the sharing of benefits. Next slide, please. So, what do we mean when we're talking about biotrade? So, biotrade refers to those activities of collection, production, transformation, and commercialization of products and services derived from native biodiversity under social, economic, and environmental sustainability criteria. This environmental, social, and economic sustainability criteria is what we refer or we call the biotrade principles and criteria that you see in the center of the image. These are the core conceptual framework and guide implementation of all the activities we do. They were after several presentations testing, um, they were finally published uh, in 2007. And since then, it has been implementation to develop businesses, sectors, and of course, value chains. The first, you see the first principles, they relate to the conservation of sustainable use of biodiversity and the equitable benefit sharing, where are the objectives of the Convention on Biological Diversity. Uh, the fourth one relates to socioeconomic sustainability, where we consider, for example, issues such as traceability, documentation, and quality systems. The principle five um, means uh, relates to legal compliance, not only applicable at the local, uh, applicable of course at the local, national, regional, and international level, where you see issues such as um, CITES, where we, the initiative should comply with CITES requirements, also the Nagoya Protocol. Uh, the principle six is at the core of the, of the work that we do to empower actors involved in biotrade activities and it's to the respect the rights, to promote and respect the rights of all the actors that are working in, in biotrade. 
And the last but not least is principle seven, which relate to the biotrade activity to respect rights to use and access to natural resources. These are our seven principles and criteria. They are um, aligned and supportive with global goals like the Sustainable Development Goals, also support implementation of the UNTAD mandate, and are aligned and supportive of the objectives of multilateral and environmental agreements like CITES and CBDs. Um, to complement the framework, we have also four approaches that are value chain, sustainable livelihood, ecosystem approach, and adaptive management. All this approach is really what we talk about biotrade. Uh, and it's what it differentiates biotrade with capital D and capital T from other biotrade or biodiversity-based initiatives. Next animation, please. So I wanted to highlight that biotrade, um, due to the evolving legal and policy framework with the SDGs and, the, for example, the Nagoya Protocol and the Paris Climate Agreement, um, and Considering also the growing experience and lessons learned among bio trade partners for since 2007 in over 65 countries and sectors, we updated the bio trade principles and criteria. And the new set um, will include is applicable for terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic biodiversity based products and services. And um, just announced you, it will be launched next month on 16 November. So I hope you can also join us there. Next slide, please. So how do we translate all these abstract concepts or all these end goals to practice? This is how we, we have the sustainable development goals or the multilateral environmental agreements and we translate that to the boundary principles and criteria. These are used to assess um, and select companies, value chains, sectors, and help us to identify the needs that they should be tackled, and also the opportunities that could be seized. It can be applicable at different levels, at the sector or value chain level, where you have common activities that can support several actors, but also at the bio trader or company level, where the companies are assessed against the principles and criteria, you develop work plans, and then you monitor and implement them. The interesting about this experience is that the that whatever it's being generated and the lessons learned are also fed up into the principles and criteria, but also at the global discussion like Convention on Biological Diversity, CITES or SDG. Next slide, please. So Biotrade is not only UNTAD ITC, we are really a network of partners. We are working, for example, at national and regional level where we have a national programs one of it is in Peru, where you will hear later about Caridad and how they're working. But we also work um, with, um, with private sector at the private sector level, where we have the Union for Ethical Biotrade, so they provide support to the private sector and the compliance to its ethical biotrade standard. The activities implemented go from all the way from the production, collection, harvesting, all to the consumption. Um, topics normally covered within the program that you will also see later uh, by Caridad and I will tackle it a little bit. It relates to policy frameworks, facilitate market access, supply chain management, enhance business capacity of SMEs, projects or even community-based associations, of course, and how we try to tackle the funding gap <laughs> that is always needed. Next slide, please. So where do we work? We work, um, BioTrade is being implemented in over 60 countries. As you can see in the map, it's, um, it includes Africa, America, Asia, and Europe. Next animation, please. We are also BioTrade principles and criteria are the and or the ethical um, standards of the Union of Ethical BioTrade. It's also being implemented in a variety of sectors where we see from personal care, uh, phytopharma, food, handicrafts, ornamental flora and fauna, sustainable tourism, and fashion. Next animation, please. As a result of the work that you see now, we are in the sales of the of the companies that are working by under biotrade principles and criteria for last year alone. 
amounted around 5.1 billion euros. And you have seen how fast it has grown because only in 2003, the sales were, uh, the value that we have for sales of companies implementing Biotrade was around 40 million US dollars. So you see how significantly we have increased. Of course, we're still small. We hope continue growing more. And also the beneficiaries, we're currently benefiting around 5 million beneficiaries, including producers, farmers, collectors, uh, hunters, and workers. And um, that is the network of the partners that we're working. We're using national and regional programs in Latin America. We're working with NGOs, business associations, and the Development Bank of Latin America. Next slide, please. This is a little bit on the area of where we work. Caridad will be talking to you more in detail about the activities uh, of what we're working, but I just wanted to highlight the uh, next animation. Uh, two, uh, two areas. One of that is the, um, we will be launching, jointly with the principles and criteria, we will be launching a knowledge, uh, the biotrade knowledge sharing and self-assessment tool, where you will have all the information uh, to, and contacts of the biotrade partners uh, in one, one entry point where you will have like one stop shopping to access all the information. And also uh, it will hold out the new principles and criteria to help you do self-assessment for company project and initiative. And I will be talking to you about it later. And also um, I wanted to highlight the UBT dialogues that are the first uh, one will be going up tomorrow on communicating biodiversity. This is in a nutshell what biotrade is. And um, we another tool that may be interesting for you companies is we're going to be next early next year, we're going to be launching the trade and biodiversity statistical tool where you will have information on trade flows of biodiversity based goods since uh, 2007 and hope it will be useful. And uh, next slide. So thank you very much. It was uh, really run up through the work that we do, but now I am stopping you from the most interesting uh, presentation of today, which is Caridad, and she will be telling us how Biotrade is implemented in practice. Yes. And all the concepts and things that I was telling you about. So thank you very much. And I'm ready to respond for any questions. Thank you, Lorena. Uh, thank you very much for this insightful presentation about biotech, about, um, sorry, biodiversity-based value chain, um, sustainable guidance for companies and inclusion of on biotech work and also its benefits, implementation and examples. Um, now we have uh, five minutes briefly to answer one or two que questions uh, from the chat. Um, then we will we will do the rest uh, in the Q and A section. I think we have um, already one question in the chat. I can read it out loud, and then uh, my colleague Lorena can simply answer. Um, hello, all. Thank you for this interesting and important theme. NGO Eco por nosotros and Animara. We work with projects to improve local value chains in fashion in terms of traceability, transparency, enhancing sustainable practices of producers. We have a huge work in Latin America and Africa. How can we collaborate? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your, for your questions. We're open to collaborations. You have also my email. And please write us and we will for sure follow up. The idea is the biotree principles and criteria and all the material that is available. It, we aim really to be used to help uh, businesses, communities, uh, projects to be more sustainable and not only generate benefit for the biodiversity, but also livelihood. So please get in touch with me and it will be my pleasure to further collaborate and start collaboration with you. I think also ITC, they have a very interesting project in fashion. And then maybe he can also tell you a little bit more even through the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Lorena. I, I have shared your email on the chat, so everyone you have uh, Lorena's contact, email contact. And um, there's another question that, yeah, let's take a second, a second question. Have you adopted new policies with the pandemic to reduce deterioration of the environment and reduce the contact of human biodiversity versus biodiversity? 
Okay, so within BioTrade, we have the principles and criteria. And in there, we really try to promote um, the deterioration of the environment to reduce the contact of animals. So for example, within BioTrade, we foster the, the creation of conservation areas. We work in buffer zones so that um, with our principle one, we really try to conserve the areas and combine it also with sustainable use so that you reduce the human animal contact. We also see, for example, how are the measures that are being implemented, documentation. Uh, we have an interesting, even an interesting example from the company in Myanmar that it shows how um, the implementation of the principles and criteria is helping them uh, on healthy issues to reduce the spread of the, of the disease. Uh, also for food safety, food security that are already embedded in biotrade. The main changes, for example, that we have seen due to the pandemic, it relates to, as we, have, as we are here now, on removing to electronic, electronic system, virtual platforms, and trying to reach out to the beneficiaries, but also to the consumers. And I think these are mainly like the, the work that we have been doing. And I know in Peru that they're also um, implementing, um, because we work within the Ministry of Environment, it's our focal point and from Peru our technical focal point. So we have a political and a technical. And they have been implementing biotech principles and in their the activities that we promote are really the conserving biodiversity, aiming to reduce this uh, human animal contact. And I, I hope I, if not, we can elaborate also farther ahead. Any other question? Thank you, Lorena. Yes, we have more questions. I see one more, but um, as we can take only one or two now, um, but please don't worry, we will answer them uh, afterwards. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, so we are moving now to the second presentation of the day by Caridad Maldonado. Caridad Maldonado is an agriculture engineer with experience in the production of crops managed under agroforestry systems, and she has studies in international trade. She's currently working uh, as sustainable trade expert at Prom Peru, the technical office for the promotion of export and tourism, tourism and image of Peru, where she works with Peruvian small and, and medium enterprises to achieve internal, internationalization with the implementation of bio trade and corporate social responsibility. Dear yeah, Caridad, um, the floor is yours. Please go ahead. Thanks for the presentation, Ivana. Uh, good morning, or better say good afternoon, everyone. Today, I will share you, thanks to the invitation of the young dad, IDC, and SECO about the experience of the biotrade in Peru. My name is Caridad Maldonado, and I am a specialist in sustainable trade for PROM Peru, an agency of the Ministry of the Foreign Trade responsible for the promotion of Peru in export, tourism, and image. Uh, next slide, please and click. Uh, thank you. To begin with, uh, I will com uh, commend you some characteristics uh, of Peru. Uh, it is located in South America with over 1,285,000 uh, square kilometers, and it's considered as one of the top 10 mega diverse country and a center of origin with a lot of genetic resource and a center of uh, and many domesticated species and uh, Peru also hosts most, the most diversity of birds, mammals, butterflies, and for example, the Tambopata and Manu regions are two of the most diverse uh, flora and fauna forests in the world. And we know that in the last two decades, the international products, uh, the international trades in products derived uh, from biodiversity has grown significantly, mainly due to the great demand for consumers in developed uh, countries and the increase in new market niches for natural, organic, uh, eco-friendly or social products. Um, click please. What represents a challenge and another, uh, an, oppor an opportunity for the countries of the region. Caridad, uh, sorry, I think you're muted. Maybe you press by a foot. 
Okay. Yeah. No, thank you. Okay, thank you. The start point of biotrade uh, practice, uh, the start point of biotrade practices in Peru began in, uh, in 1992 with the signing of the Biological Diversity Conventions. And in 2001, we, uh, we made match with the Juntat and its uh, biotrade initiative. Also in this year, the National Strategy, Strategy for Biological Diversity was signed which was uh, promoted by the presidency of the Council of Ministers, and it was prepared with the contributions of numerous institutions and individuals within the framework of a broad process participatory uh, at a national level, uh, led by the Minister uh, of Environmental, and together with it, Biotrade was promulgated as an activity that throughout the sustainable use uh, of native biodiversity resource uh, promotes investment and trade in line with the objective of the Biological uh, Diversity Conventions, uh, supporting the development of economic uh, activity at a local level through strategic alliances and the generation of added value of competitive biodiversity products for the national and international market with criteria of equity, uh, social equity and economic, uh, economic profitability. In 2003, the National Program for the Promotion of the Biotrade was instituted. A series of activities was launched that have made it possible uh, to lay the operational and, inter and institutional basis for the development of this initiative. I need your uh, consent. <laughs> of this initiative in the country. In 2010, a Supreme Decree was uh, created the National Commission for the Promotion um, of Biotrade, you know, it's attached uh, of the Ministry of the Foreign Trade, um, whose oral objective is to achieve institutional uh, consolidation of the National Biotrade Program. So in 2014, Peru ratified the Nagoya Protocol on Access and Benefit Sharing to Genetic Resource. And during this year and in 2015, the Commission worked on the national strategy, which was officially published in 2016 with a plan of action for to 2025. And it's the guide for the development of a lot of activities uh, for 14 institutions that form part of the National Commission for the Promotion of Biotrade in Peru. But uh, this, this will not have been possible without the participation uh, of the co international corporations such as uh, GIS, IDC, SECO, uh, the Juntat, which has allowed uh, the development of the biotrade with projects uh, such as Peru Biodiverso 1 or Peru Biodiverso 2, uh, so uh, Biocomercio Andino, um, a project that we shared with Ecuador and Colombia, and uh, Peruvian Nova, for example. No? And currently in Peru, we are developing the, the project on the implementation on the, of the year GIF uh, Nagoya Protocol. And, um, and also the, 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 the commercial promotion also were activities uh, financed by these projects, you know, with the participation in uh, international fairs such as Natural Expo West, um, Biofag in Germany, or Peru Natura here in Peru. Uh, Peru Natura is the, the, the main fair for the, for the food and beverage industry and gastronomy um, in the region. And this promotion <coughs> uh, was very important uh, to publicize uh, our products, their properties, and at the same time, uh, allowed entrepreneurs and business, uh, businessmen to know about market access, um, quality um, requirements, um, the products uh, or another products. So um, please, next. Uh, next, I will talk to you about <clears throat> some of products. Uh, one click more. 
thank you, when some of crowds of Peruvian biodiversity with exportable interest. Now, uh, for example, we have Lucuma, which is an extraordinary and natural uh, energizer providing fever, uh, potassium, carotenoids, and vitamin B3, which contains niacin. And niacin uh, uh, stimulates the proper functioning of the nervous system and uh, an antioxidant and have an antioxidant properties. It use um, as used with an scarcity uh, pulp uh, serves to prevent certain cancer and heart disease. Now the export from these products exceed the three million dollars in 2019. I have a Chile. I have Chile as a their uh, main market. Uh, the purple corn. Uh, is a type of corn native to the Peruvian Anden with oxidant uh, properties due to the contents of anthocyanins um, and in its corn cup and the grains. It's consuming juice or compotes uh, as well as for uh, cosmetic use. Um, export of this product almost amount to $3 million and it has a USA as its main market. And the most uh, commercial presentation is a uh, floor. Um, maca, maca is a uh, Lepidium meigeni, is a tuber and that is distributed in the central Andes of Peru, Bolivia, and northwestern of Argentina, with multiple health uh, benefits due to uh, its high uh, nutritional and medicinal value. Now, maca um, uh, is traditionally used to restore mental and physical balance, uh, provide vitality, and improve endurance uh, in athletes. Now, in 2019, foreign sales uh, of maca and its deri deriva de device uh, reached a volume of more 2,000 tons valued at more than 15 million dollars. Uh, next, please. But uh, what, uh, what do these products have in common? No, and how they managed to develop uh, a value chain uh, that has allowed to enter in international markets, and what have been results? What are the uh, what are the the the, um, the challenge? No. E so I uh, we can say that um, a key strategy for the development of the small and medium enterprise in the globally side world is to promote the associativity, uh, please enter, of the companies. Um, this associativity uh, promoting the creation of cluster and business uh, network in competitive uh, production chains um, that allows them to have an exportable offer and at the same time to manage more um, closely the traceability of the product. Um, does allow them to follow the in the road of the products, their components, raw materials, and related information. In uh, in the not too distant future, no, this will reduce risk, uh, ensure quality, and generate uh, confidence. Please next. Yeah, see some numbers. In uh, from the graph, uh, we can conclude. Um, first, that at the end of the 2019, uh, the Peruvian export of, pro of products derived from biodiversity you know, re uh, reached uh, 4,022 million of dollars. Now, also, we can say that during the last five years, uh, the export of products uh, derived from, bio, from the Peruvian biodiversity have exceeded 400 million dollars. Uh, and um, between the 2015 and 2018, the exports had grown, uh, however, during the period uh, uh, 2019, uh, there was a decline of al almost 14%. Mm, please enter. And and in uh, from this uh, stay graph, um, export trends of Peruvian biodiversity-based products, um, we can see which are the most important export products and his behaviors in the recent years. 
no, uh, we have the quinoa, what is the most representative product now, uh, is known as the queen of the bio trade products in Peru. And uh, so we can see the, the opportunity, the business opportunity for both products, uh, for the food products and the manufacturer products, such as uh, cochineal and tara with tannins. Okay, uh, please. Next. So we are uh, we are talking about two examples uh, in Peru, uh, the uh, value chains of quinoa and the value chains of, uh, of the Brazil nuts, please. In the, the next, thank you. In this slide, uh, click see, yes. Uh, is in this slide, I present the, the value chain model for the PLI's quinoa in Peru. So at the micro level uh, in the function sequence have been identified uh, the all stage from the production to the market. And at the next level, uh, the next level, please uh, enter please. Um, details the activities um, carry out at the agent stage. No, the operators of the chains uh, for products are made up of group of producers in the primary stage. No, for example, uh, we, we are talking about from Copa in Cabana Cooperative in Puno, no, in the south of Peru, with more than 800 hectares no, dedicated to the ground for the quinoa. No? And, in, and also we consider it the, in the transform stage companies with national or international markets. So please put enter. At the meso stage, Sustainable uh, certifications were identified as a valuable strategy for entering demanding markets. Now, the launch of this change has led to the development of working group, such as uh, the non-governmental uh, organization or agencies attached uh, to ministry, uh, such as Ministry of Agriculture, uh, for example, with Senasa, you know, which provide technical assistance uh, to producers and multi-institutional or technical uh, groups, uh, such as uh, uh, Ministry of Productions and University with the enterprises uh, incubators. Finally, at the, at the please, one, este, one, Thank you. Uh, finally, at the macro level, we have the government government agencies uh, like uh, the, the ministries. Uh, really, no, uh, in the in the in the first uh, stage, uh, we have the. The presentation of the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, also the regional governments, and uh, the importance of the. Or during the transformation stage with um, Ministry of the Productions and during the trade stage, the importance of the Ministry of the Foreign Trade. Please, next. Mm, next. Um, okay, now uh, in these pictures, no, uh, we have to see the quinoa and we can talk or we can share with you that uh, quinoa is endemic uh, to the Andes Highlands and range from Colombia to the Northern Argentina to Southern Chile. Um, toasted uh, for its health benefits, quinoa is uh, now grown in a number of countries around the world, including the USA, Canada, Italy, Sweden, and India but most of it is still grown in Peru and Bolivia. Uh, please, next. Uh, for, for this uh, change to be sustainable, it's uh, necessary to identify those services that add value. Not talking into consideration market requirements, uh, so in these regards, organic farming practices might reduce the pollution, uh, conserve water, redu reduce soil erosion, increase soil fertility, and use uh, less energy. No? 
Also important at certifications such as the biotrade sales or uh, fair trade certifications and the implementation of these practices impacts in the evolution of the Peruvian quinoa exports uh, because export increased significantly since uh, 2013 declared international years of quinoa by the uh, United Nations. Please, next. No, uh, in the picture we can see um, a group of producers of quinoa in Chumbivilcas region. Um, they are associates associated uh, over more of uh, 14 producers. No, they grow uh, organic quinoa and also have uh, the biotrade uh, sealed and form part of the biotrade consortium in Cusco. No, for them, um, having uh, these seals allows them access to financing or technical assistance when a related organization or institutions um, near to do the biotrade initiative. Please. Uh, Claro. Uh, the extremely versatile uh, quinoa can be used in any number of sweet or savory dishes, and it's commonly uh, boiled like rice or ground as a flour, commonly uh, uh, to fortify uh, baked goods. Now, since the promotion from 2013 onwards, quinoa has been hailed as a superfood and has grown in popularity around the world. No? Uh, thanks to the drive for innovation, Peruvian companies are bidding on Finnish, uh, Finnish foods uh, with quinoa, with, with, uh, such as um, energy bars, hamburgers, uh, soaps, uh, flours, and even chocolate mixed. And please, next, next slide and has also uh, been uh, able to develop uh, the cosmetic industry in products uh, as shampoo, as creams, soaps, uh, or, in, uh, or oils no? for the manufacturing industry. Please, next. In the case of the Brazil nuts, uh, we can say that Brazil nuts are, are tree nuts native uh, to the Amazon forest, rainforest in Brazil, Bolivia, and in Peru. And their smooth buttery texture and nutty flavor are typically enjoyed uh, raw or blanched. No? Brazil nuts are nutritional uh, powerhouse providing healthy fats, antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals. And it's particularly high in selenium, a mineral with potent antioxidant uh, properties. It's essential for the thyroid and influence uh, our immune system and cell growth. Uh, in Peru, uh, the region of Madre de Dios is the main region where there are concessions for people with permits to collect uh, the nuts. Now, these activities known as safra. Uh, next, please. The certifications uh, as organic fair trade or uh, biotrade Peru add value to this product. No, this seals uh, is provided to those uh, the, the bio commerce uh, Peru seals. You no, know, is provide uh, to those initiatives that comply with uh, principles and criteria of bio bio trade in Peru. Uh, next, please. Thanks. The, develop, the development of the derivative products, such as oil uh, for cosmetic use, means a commercial opportunity for all actors in these chains. Uh, the next. And in the next slide, we can see you know, uh, the value chains model being developed uh, uh, in Peru. And please click. And as uh, in the quinoa chains, uh, we can identify the actors, operational service, uh, and related uh, institutions. And I can see, please check, uh, please enter. And I 
I can say that uh, during this year, the National Commission for the Promotion of Biotrade has been preparing an action plan to promote uh, to pres and preserve this product, you know, the Brazilian nuts where market access, uh, quality and traceability uh, issues are being uh, prioritized. And next, please. Next. And currently, um, by the COVID impact, there they are five drivers you know, that will shape the challenge and opportunities for these products or you know, from the products uh, the, for, for natural products. Um, the first is uh, changing value face to face the uh, face with these situations, consumer have felt a uh, fear, anxiety, uh, which has led to, to uh, which has led to a new prioritization prioritization of values such as the importance of health, uh, the importance of safety, or the family. Um, to the development of technology, these are differential a challenge for companies uh, to adapt to the virtual world. So new ways of living, new ways of working, buying, playing. Uh, so the, um, we have changes in environmental uh, pressures and we don't only uh, have environmental challenge, but uh, now there are uh, socio socioeconomic challenge um, known as the ethical purchasing and uh, change in the economic power among the, the partners in the world, which puts China in the same position as the USA. Uh, no? uh, five, population change, the economic recessions uh, uh, caused an interruption in immigration, not only for people, but also for goods and services. No? In this way, Peruvian initiative in general have managed uh, to contemplate a new panorama where sustainability is a different uh, mindless storm. No? Uh, next, please. And um, we have uh, developed a virtual course uh, for biotrade um, uh, in in this in the website of Prom Peru. No, I this is the the, the web. No, for more in, uh, for more in, information, please visit the link. And uh, it is all. No, I'm ready for the questions, and I'm really glad for thank you caridad thank you very much for such an interesting presentation certainly interesting to see how the quinoa value chain and other value chains have, have been developed and hope this provides an insightful illustration to replicate these successful sustainable business models in other value chains um we have um Another question that uh, I think was addressed to Lorena during her presentation, but uh, maybe you can also answer this. Um, it's from Nolan Kiros. It says, is there any role for agricultural food safety certification standards into biotrade? So maybe Kate, before you answer, I can say that um, Food safety is part of the biotrade principles and criteria that Lorena explained, principle seven, which is uh, not only the right to use and access to natural resources by actors involved in biotrade, but also of their community. And food safety, food security is addressed in it, this is in the updated uh, principles and criteria. I don't know, Carrie, that if you want to complement. Uh... Yes, uh, we consider that the evaluation of the principles and criteria are very important for the uh, for the promotion of practices in the in different sector. No, not only on the agricultural sector. No, uh, 
uh, also in the service sector, for example, ecotourism, where it includes you know, these sustainable practices in the, in the value chain. I can hear you, your microphone. Thank you, thank you, Corey. That it, I, I, I pressed it, but it, I think it was a bit slow. So sorry, and <laughs> thank you for alerting me. Yes, I was saying that uh, we don't have um, more questions for now, but I also wanted to remind uh, participants that uh, we also take questions in Spanish. Um, and also French, Portuguese, um, English, of course. So if, if you have any, okay, I see now we have another question from Mario Lanau. What are the efforts of the Peruvian government to change the name of Brazil nut to Amazonic nut? Will this be possible? We are. Uh, we receive these uh, these suggestions of the um, of the companies, no. Um, but we are team uh, in at the commission at the national commissions uh, because uh, these issues uh, not only you no know, a Peruvian government. Uh, so we need to work uh, with another institutions you know, to, to put this theme on the table. Thank you, Caridad. So now uh, it's time to pay attention to the third and live demo presentation of today by Ana Batallone. Ana Batallone is an associate program officer at the Trade for Sustainable Development program of the International Trade Center, IDC. She works with trade-related technical assistance programs to support small and medium-sized enterprises from developing, developing countries to increase their competitiveness through the adoption of sustainable business practices. She co-manages the IDC's collaboration with the UNCTAD Biotrade Initiative to leverage the understanding of guidelines on sustainable sourcing and production practices of biodiversity-based products among producers and companies. Anna holds a diploma of advanced studies in corporate social responsibility from the University of Geneva and a master's degree in international, international affairs from the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies. Before joining ITC, she worked in different government agencies and international organizations in Brazil and in Switzerland. Dear Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ivana. Thank you for this kind introduction. Um, so as mentioned, my name is Anna Battaglioni and I work at the International Trade Center. And in the next 15 minutes, uh, we will see together uh, different practical tools for companies, institutions, starting with Sustainability Map, which is developed by ITC and helps uh, companies to identify, compare, and also self-assess their performance against voluntary sustainability standards. And after that, we will also look into uh, the Biotrade Knowledge Sharing and the Self-Assessment Tool, which are currently being developed. Uh, as part of a collaboration with UNCTAD uh, Biotrade Initiative. And they also bring together information for companies and institutions related to biotrade and also help companies to better understand what is biotrade about. But before going into the two main points of my presentation, I would like to uh, share some uh, further information about ITC. Uh, ITC stands for International Trade Center and is the joint agency of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, and the World Trade Organization, WTO. The main mandate of ITC is to support small and medium-sized enterprises in developing countries 
to become more competitive and connect to international markets to, uh, for trade and investment. And the way ITC does that is through uh, coaching programs targeting companies, but also institutions, as well as advisory services and public goods. And one of the public goods that I will show to you today is Sustainability Map, uh, which you can access at sustainabilitymap.org. It's a free and online platform uh, targeting companies, institutions, but also individual users. And it aims to uh, promote sustainable business practices, especially uh, related to information about voluntary sustainability standards in a way to increase transparency about those standards and what does it mean to comply with them and what does it mean also uh, in terms of the sustainability requir requirements they cover. So it's a trade related tool uh, focusing on sustainability uh, aspects for companies and international value chains. And the tool is actually divided in different modules. There are three of them the standards map, the virtual network, and the market trends. Uh, but for the, the purpose of my presentation and also in interest of time, I will only speak about standards map, but I also invite you to uh, explore, navigate the other modules. And if you do have interest to know more about them, or if you have questions, please also feel free to reach out to me. I'll share my contact details at the end of my presentation. And the standard maps module actually provides information on more than 250 voluntary sustainability standards um, and allows users to actually uh, analyze these criteria and the processes related to them. So they can have um, a better, um, a better information when making their decision on which standard they want to uh, comply with, they want to get certified, um, so it really allows this transparency when it comes to international value chains and sustainability standards. And the best way to navigate the platform is actually looking at the platform. So now I will switch my screen to the website so we can see together how to navigate it. And I believe you can see it now. Um, yes. Okay, so now I am here in the homepage of Sustainability Map, sustainabilitymap.org. And I am going to the module called Standards Map here at the uh, top of the page. I have here a small introduction of what is this module about or what you can achieve by navigating it. Uh, but I am going directly to the tool. So I'm clicking again on go to standards map. And when I reach to the page, I see two kinds of information in this page. First, I have a filter uh, that will enable me to, uh, to refine my search to identify the standard or to identify a group of standards that actually fit to my criteria. And I have also the list of all the standards that are available at Sustainability Map. And this list is continuously growing. So in a couple of weeks, you may also see different standards uh, uploaded uh, in the tool. And the best way to see how to use it is actually having an example in mind. So I'm going to take as an example the presentation of Caridad. She mentioned about Brazil nuts produced in Peru. So I will use this as an example. And I can filter uh, by selecting the product that I'm looking into. In the case, I'm interested to see the Brazil nuts. And only by clicking on that, I see 64 standards applicable to this product. And I will add now the country, which is Peru. 
I also see the number of standards is a bit lower. And now I add here, what is the destination market that my company is interested to export? And let's say I'm interested to export to the European market. So as a result, I have traded standards and I can use more filters also in the advanced search items. So there are many ways to actually target what you're looking for. And I want to show you how you can compare these standards side by side. I will just choose two standards uh, from the list. I will select the Bio Suisse and the EU Organic Farming. And when I click on that, I actually see here uh, the two standards I selected and four options on what I can do with these standards. The first one is related to having a quick overview of what is the standard about. The second one is uh, allows me to compare them with regard to their sustainability requirements. The third one allows me to set a reference that could be one of these standards or a third standard, so I can benchmark them. And the final option, the self-assessment, allows me as a user of sustainability map to uh, carry out a self-assessment of that standard. So I can self-assess my performance, my company performance against the selected standard. So I'm clicking on compare side by side. And the first thing I see is actually this very visual graphs, uh, which are showing me how the two standards I chose, they compare with regard to sustainability requirements. The sustainability requirements here are environment, social management, quality, and ethics. But you can also look into more details of what is inside with each of these sustainability requirements. So for instance, I click on environment, and now I can see that, uh, well, there are different sub requirements related to soils, forests, inputs, biodiversity. And I can actually see how many requirements each of the standards uh, has and how they are comparable. So for example, if I look into soil, and I'm just trying to show you here, uh, it gives me the information that there are 10 soil-related uh, requirements um, in, the, in this standard, the standard number one, whereas in the standard number two, there are 12. So this is the first layer of the comparison. You can also see side by side how this comparison happens. So you can expand the view and you can see what does it mean a soil general principle what is the information that is stated in the standard document uh, and actually how they are comparable and you can make this analysis for all the requirements that are covered by these standards at least by one of them that's why when you see it like uh, for example a red cross or a green check is because uh, for the first standard, this requirement is not covered, whereas for the second one, this is covered. And this is just a very simple um, demonstration of how you can use standards map. You can also go a step further and identify information on how does the standard operate? What does it take to get certified, verified, um, if there are any premium involved with the standard, what are the costs, how is the auditing process, and much more information about the governance and the administration of the standard. And I will stop the demonstration here because I want to go back now to my slides and I want to show you, um, I want to continue with the second part of my presentation. And in the second part, what I want to show you and talk a bit more is uh, about the BioTrade knowledge sharing. So the BioTrade knowledge sharing is a page that is hosted at Sustainability Map. And again, is fully online, is free of charge. And users can find in this page different features, all related to BioTrade. First, there is a network of institutions and BioTrade companies. 
Uh, there is also a library with materials related to bio trade, uh, and those can be from training materials to also reports and studies on the topic and covering also different value chains. And the page also um, is, uh, serves as the entry point for the upcoming BioTrade self-assessment tool, which I will explain in my next slide. Um, and besides that, there is also a lot of information about what BioTrade is about, who are the partners of the global BioTrade program, because actually this page, uh, as well as the self-assessment tool, they are developed under the framework of the global bio trade program, which is implemented by UNCTAD and partners and financed by the Swiss State Secretariat for Economic Affairs, SECO. The page is live, meaning that you can actually visit the page right away after the webinar uh, by uh, clicking on the link that is available in the screen. And you can also be part of the network of bio trade companies institutions by also contacting us and uh, we'll be happy also to help you create an account and a profile to be featured here. And now moving into more details of what is the BioTrade self-assessment tool um, hosted at the BioTrade knowledge sharing page, we will have an entry point to a questionnaire, a customized questionnaire uh, against the BioTrade principles and criteria. So as my colleague Lorena, she has explained in her presentation, there is the BioTrade principles and criteria, which is a, a set of uh, principles and criteria um, to promote uh, sustainability in biodiversity-based value chains. And given that it targets companies uh, as well as institutions, we are now developing this self-assessment tool to enable companies to actually understand better what does it take to become a biotrade company and what are the sustainability requirements related to the biotrade principles and criteria. And also by doing the self-assessment companies, they can also um, receive a diagnostic report of areas of improvement, as well as benchmark the biotrade principles and criteria against other voluntary standards that are available at Sustainability Map. So the tool will be launched on 16th November. Please stay tuned for the launch. And also uh, before that, you can start navigating Sustainability Map and also creating your profile. And in the final part of my presentation, I just want to show you what, uh, what is the process actually to start using the BioTrade principles and criteria self-assessment tool. First of all, you need to have a profile at Sustainability Map, and that goes for companies, institutions, or individual users. You create a profile at the homepage of Sustainability Map, and here you have an idea of how your profile can look like. Um, so you can have very detailed information about it, and also it can become public, so others, other users can uh, identify you and actually get in touch with you. So this is also an interesting feature to give more visibility to, to companies. And after that, you access the BioTrade Knowledge Sharing Self-Assessment page. Um, and there will be a button where you will be uh, redirected to the self-assessment tool. And by clicking on that, you will be able to perform the self-assessment questionnaire uh, with uh, different questions covering different sustainability areas. And at the end of that, you will uh, receive this diagnostic report on the different areas that uh, perhaps your company requires some improvement in order to comply with the biotrade principles and criteria. What is very interesting is that by having a profile, you can always save the information that you are inputting and then you can come back. So all of this will be saved in your uh, profile and it actually can be used as a baseline for any work that your company is considering to do in the future uh, when it comes to uh, becoming more sustainable, becoming greener. And finally, you're also able to compare side by side your results also to the BioTrade principles and criteria um, according to the documentation um, that as Lorena mentioned has just been um, launched the new version. So I'll stop here with my presentation. 
I hope you enjoyed. I also welcome you to write me if you have any questions or are interested to know more and also to uh, stay tuned for the launch of the self-assessment self tool. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much for this nice demo, this dynamic and interesting platform and self-assessment tool for companies. It's very interesting for them. Um, I think there's a lot of interest in knowing if uh, this tool is available in Spanish. We have two questions here. In the chat, um, is there a Spanish version of this tool? And another saying, another question from Nestor Moran saying, both sustainability and standards map are valuable tools, but I think it should include information in Spanish in order to make it easier for small producers to understand the benefits of certifications and take advantage of market opportunities. Thank you for these questions. They are very interesting. Uh, and indeed, this is, um, this is a question that pretty much we get a lot. And we have what we have done since the launch of Sustainability Map a couple of years ago, uh, we have been trying also to update the information in Spanish. Uh, for the launch of the self-assessment uh, tool of Biotrade Principles and Criteria, we will have it uh, for the moment only in English. Um, but of course, this is always something we can um, also try to adjust depending on the interest from the audience and from companies that uh, wish to make use of the tool. But definitely having at least in Spanish and also in French for uh, different countries that are uh, implementing um, not just Biotrade, but are also using standards map. This um, has been definitely one um, priority for us. and. Um, we actually have the tool. If you go on the in the main page, you can uh, click on Spanish or French, but not all information will be fully translated because as the standards, they uh, the way we upload them is with the original text and some of the text, most of the text is in English. Um, the user, they, he will, might also see some information that is uh, in a different language. But if you do have interest to fully navigate in Spanish, also, I'll be happy to share with you some insights and maybe we can do this bilaterally on how to further explore the tool in Spanish because this is also possible. Thank you, Anna, very much for your response. Um, we have a question. Yeah, saying this is a very valuable tool. In fact, at some point in, in the future, put an auto-translate option. Yeah, be provided with options in many languages. This is a suggestion. Yeah. yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, Anna, please. No, I, this is actually, uh, we have done that in the past uh, using this kind of uh, auto-translated uh, softwares that you can plug in your browser. Um, but we, to say that we also uh, aim to translate it to Spanish, like in a full version, but naturally, uh, given that we have over 250 standards, um, that is, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say it will happen like uh, uh, very soon, but um, again, like uh, feel free to contact me and I can also show you how you can make use of these uh, auto translated uh, options that would be available right now. So you can start using the tool uh, with that in mind. Thank you, Anna. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, we have a question saying, can you please share the presentation with participants? Yes, this will be afterwards available in the website of the event. Um, I'm checking, yeah. Has, thank you for the presentation. Do you keep records for the trade within countries around the world? Is there a database? that the public can access. So I, I see here is a database about records. Well, UMTAD and ITC, they do have database about global trade, yeah, exchange of trade. Um, but then I'll leave it to Ivana to respond about a specific uh, database for biotrade, which I think Lorena mentioned that in her presentation as well. Yes, yes, Lorena mentioned it in, in, in her presentation. Um, 
we are developing um, a database with our uh, stats statistics department in UNCTAD, and we can also send you more information on that um, yeah, afterwards. So if you would like, um, I know the person who made this question, you can leave your email contact and we can share with you the work we have been advancing on, on this database. It's, it's very interesting. It, it will be, yeah, it, it's under developing. We are under development, but uh, yeah. If you if you give um, you can give the email contact in the chat, we'll be more than happy to send you all the info. We've uh, yes we have done uh, two two stats webinar on trade and biodiversity statistics. We we we've done one in Spanish and another one in English. Um, maybe um, in the future when we release this tool. We, we are going to do more webinars on that topic. Thank you for your email. I saw it in the chat. Um, if we don't have more questions for Anna, we can go now. We have a final, um, we, we are running out of time. We almost uh, time to close the webinar, but I think maybe we can take, um, I've seen questions here. There was one for Caridad that maybe Caridad you can answer. In Spanish, hay esfuerzos para reforzar las gestiones comerciales de las aso asociaciones productoras de quinoa. Muchos de ellos solo venden a intermediarios. I don't know, Caridad, if you could um, answer this, this question. Uh, as the uh, commissions, uh, as the National Commission for the Bio Trade, we have a an, an national strategy, you know, uh, in which uh, are the activities that conform the a plan, uh, an action plan for 2025, and um, in this strategy um, are the the. The institution, the institutions uh, related to the bio trade. You no, know, in this, uh, in this sense, you no, know, we are promoting diverse uh, products like quinoa or Andean grains or Amazonian products. You no, know, um, so is that the question of Gianfranco Rios? I think. So I answer by the chat. Sorry, Carida, yes, you, you can also um, answer by, I mean, in the chat. This question is for, yeah, from Gianfranco Rios. Mm, yep. Yeah. I don't know, let me check if we have more questions. We have to close the webinar in two minutes, but um, just, I want to remind you that any, any questions, we'll be happy to answer them afterwards bilaterally if you, if you give us uh, your email contact. Um, let me check. I think there's, there was also another question that was not answered. We have another one from Gregory Mungal. I can read out loud and I don't know if you carry that or Anna want to, to reply. Um, to protect sustainable food supply chains, value chains, in relation to cross-border trade within the frameworks of intra-regional and extra-regional trade, is relevant data capturing methodologies adopted to uphold regulatory framework policies, standards, transparency, accountability, et cetera, via digital platforms like blockchain, electronic singles, window port, community systems. Oh, there is some questions. Uh, what is the question, Ivana? Um, I, I don't think I fully understood. Yes, I share it now with everyone again in the chat so you can better see it because there's many. Yeah. Here you, you, I mm -hmm. can read again. I know you, if you can. I don't know yeah, if you can. I can see it now. Uh, mm -hmm. um, well, I think the question is actually very well framed because um, it somewhat provides. And answering, no, like 
I, I agreed with that, with this uh, suggestion, like uh, the relevance you know, of uh, capturing methodologies uh, adopted to uphold regulatory frameworks. And then some examples here, like digital platforms, blockchain, um, and so on. Uh, we like, if I can connect that question to actually sustainability map, uh, so I can speak with more, um, yeah, with more authority about the, the platform. We we do we are not sustainability map is not necessarily a traceability platform, um, even though uh, we do promote uh, the creation of networks within value chains. So this is also possible. And I didn't speak more about that because this is actually part of a uh, module called um, network. So if you also go to sustainability map, you're able to see this module and you will see that it actually works as not a traceability platform, but it allows also uh, users to see how uh, where companies are located and information about companies. And we also have a special feature that we normally develop with uh, through collaborations that is to also allow um, the visualization of how value chain actors are actually uh, linked uh, to, uh, to specific value chains. So for example, how a tea uh, farmer from Nepal is actually connected to a retail shop in the US and what is the path between that. So um, just to say also like, and here is an invitation also uh, for you to check this module because you have more information um, on how this free tool can also be leveraged to create some kind of a transparency in value chains, um, especially from agri-food uh, textiles uh, and other value chains. Thank you, Anna, for, for your reply. I am um, leaving you the contact, biotech contact, contact email in the chat in case you, you want to contact us if there's anything. Um, I think so. Yeah, I think it's time to, to conclude this webinar session. Um, we can go to the next slide. Yes, thank you. So we'll be happy to reply bilaterally, as I said, to any questions afterwards. Um, it has been a great pleasure for us to have you here today. Uh, my sincere thanks to and congratulations to, to the speakers for such interesting presentations. We hope that um, you have really learned and enjoyed a lot today. Um, also, yes, stay, stay tuned for the upcoming webinars we have, information and, and on our work uh, in social media, and also by email. A few quick kind reminders that, um, as previously mentioned, if there are any questions, we will answer them. Um, please, if you're so kind, we, we would like you to complete the following webinar um, evaluation that I'm going to share now in the chat with you. We'll also send um, this survey afterwards, but yeah, we would kindly ask you to, to reply. Thank you very much. Um, after we, we go, um, I will ask you to please turn on your cameras for a final group picture of this webinar. Um, if you turn on the cameras, I will also ask my colleagues to please take a picture as a backup in case. Um, thank you. I see already some faces. That's nice. Okay. Let's wait one minute. So we all have. Okay. Quite good for now. <laughs> okay. So I will count and we'll make a picture. So one, two, three. Thank you very much. I think it's done. Ivana, maybe we have three pages in the screenshot. No? Yeah, sure. I saw it. We have one, two, three. Yeah, I take yeah. the first one. Let me take the second and then the third. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Yeah. So we, we, we make sure we, all, we have all in the picture. <laughs> okay. Here I go for the second one. And the third. Page. Nice, perfect. Now, yeah, everyone included in the picture. Okay, so thank you very much. Um,
for participating in this webinar. Thank you as well for the questions. Uh, it has been a pleasure for us to have you here and we hope uh, you have really enjoyed and learned a lot. Warm greetings to all. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.